Andrew Filipponi with a huge following on the fan in Pittsburgh. Joining us live on the fan cam, Twitch, and YouTube here on DFW Sports Station. Good morning, Andrew. How are you, man? Well, I appreciate that introduction. Huge following. That doesn't mean it's a universally uh, beloved following who uh, appreciates every single thing I say. Uh, so let's get that clear to start here. Uh, it is great to wake up with you guys and uh, preview uh, this matchup that we've seen in three Super Bowls. And I would bet just about every dollar in RJ's uh, betting accounts, which we know is a lot, <laughs> that we won't see this matchup in a Super Bowl in New Orleans in February. <laughs> I would, I would, I would double down on that. Are you a lightning rod there? What What are the Pittsburgh Steeler talk radio I, fans I, I, like? Yeah, I just, I, I don't. I just say how I feel, and for whatever reason, that pisses some people off. It's not like blatantly or purposely antagonistic. I don't have a thought and say, my God, this is really going to rile people up. But I apparently my personality has been abrasive and has graded on people my entire life. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, but I where are you like from? Let's start have... there. Where are you from? Well, I'm originally from New York, but I've lived here for 15 years. So, uh, you know, going back to like high school principals and uh, baseball coaches and stuff, I don't know why I have just a natural default setting that irritates people, but I guess I do. And I found a profession where it seems to suit me just fine. All right. Give us the last Steelers take or two that has lit up the phone lines and really ticked people off. What's your, what's your most recent take that's irritated Steeler fans? Well, the one that is, I think, the uh, big uh, talking point here now is Devontae Adams. And, you know, I, having lived through the Brandon Ayuk soap opera and thinking that that was a done deal and wanting it to happen, now, uh, thankfully, it did not because he has not played like a $30 million a year receiver and he's taking his clothes off at 49ers practice. He's so mad at Kyle Shanahan. Um, so from that perspective, I wanted it, didn't happen. This one, I just... I think it's going to take the Steelers having to thread an unbelievable needle. I don't see how they cajole uh, Devontae Adams into wanting this to be the destination where he spends his golden years in the NFL. I think there are reasons to think it's attractive because, uh, you know, he, there's not a lot of competition for the football here besides George Pickens. He would be their number one wide receiver. Uh, they would, I think, pay him handsomely, not $35 million a year, but I think they'd renegotiate the last two years on his contract and still give them around $30 million. Uh, but the problem is the, the compensation, and I'm not really in the mood to give up a second-round pick and then some for a guy who has a hamstring injury right now. And uh, also, I've seen the decline of guys in their 30s. Antonio Brown fell apart in his 30s. Now, that was mostly because he's an insane person. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just I don't think that it's going to be worth it for the Steelers to trade second round pick, fifth round pick. Mike Florio said two thirds. That's what the Jets have next year. I don't think the Steelers would meet that asking price. And people seem to be bothered by that because after George Pickens, we have basically skeletons that you put on your front porch for Halloween playing wide receiver for us right now. What does he do to their ceiling uh, on the year? Uh, I think it makes them RJ a team that is a playoff lock. I mean, if they don't equal what they did last year, then all of this uh, discussion that gets um, said nationally about how Tomlin is God's gift to coaching would have to get, I think, re-examined. Uh, the guy in playoff games has been outscored in the first quarter 66 to nothing their last five games, and he hasn't won one since 2016. But people nationally seem to want to either ignore that or have selective uh, memories when it comes to their recent playoff failures. I think it makes them a team that has to win a playoff game as well. Uh, that really is the mantra here. It's playoff winner bust because of that drought that I just hit on. And you throw Devontae Adams in there with this defense, which, by the way, I thought was on the level of the 2008 or 2010 defenses that got to the Super Bowl. And when you're gutted by Joe Flacco, that's another thing I have to re-examine here because that just can't happen to an elite defense. So I think they, they always play Baltimore tight. They have Lamar Jackson's number. They do decently against Joe Burrow. Uh, RJ, I'm saying like 11 wins and a playoff win if they get Devontae Adams here. Andrew Filipponi from Pittsburgh here on 105 Through the Fan. Have you been an advocate of replacing Tomlin? Uh, I have at times, absolutely, Shan, because, look, we've got, we got a situation where his last two offensive coordinators before Arthur Smith were a guy named Randy Feekner 
partner who no one's ever heard of, who's been out of football, can't even get into any of these minor league football leagues ever since that whole scenario uh, with him replacing Todd Haley, who just had a personality that people didn't like, especially Big Ben. And uh, then he hired Matt Canada, who was a nomadic journeyman college offensive coordinator who wasn't good enough at LSU. And because he had a personal relationship with Tom and going back to recruiting his son to Maryland, where he was the interim head coach, uh, he got a job here as an offensive coordinator with zero NFL credentials to speak of. And literally every single person who evaluates tape who is on social media said the same thing. This guy's offense is high schoolish, college ish at best. Uh, so I put that back on Mike Tomlin. It was not Art Rooney who mandated hire this guy who really no one's ever heard of in the NFL rank and file. So that's a bad look for Tomlin. But my thing with Tomlin has always been, or not always, but recently for the last few years, been this very high floor, incredibly low ceiling. That has been their team now for years. And I just get tired of it. I think Steelers fans do too. We're not a franchise like the Browns that throws parades for just making the playoffs. We expect more just like you guys do down in Dallas. We want more and we don't get it. Uh, we look at the coach who's making almost $20 million who has almost autonomy and we get fed up with it and tired of it. Andrew, is Justin Fields a better thrower than you thought? Uh, is he a better quarterback than you thought? Is he the guy? regardless of Russell Wilson's health. Uh, I am very encouraged by what I've seen from him. I'll try to tick off those questions one by one here. Uh, he doesn't throw the ball better than I thought because that's the one thing about him that I always believed in, and the Steelers definitely believed in. They had him ranked higher than Trevor Lawrence on their draft board. They had him as the number one quarterback. He throws a great football. The second one, is he a better quarterback? Yes. His decision-making has been way better. I can think of maybe two throws uh, in four games that could have or should have resulted in interceptions. Only one of them did. But for the most part, with putting the ball in the air, he's made very uh, sharp, quick, decisive, intelligent decisions with the ball. I did not expect that. The turnover-prone uh, things and the uh, – careless play that uh really riddled him in chicago seen almost none of that so give him a big thumbs up there and then is he the guy right now i would say yes which gets back to the Devonte adams thing tj watt is in the last year of his contract so is george pickens and so is justin fields and i happen to be one of these guys who believes the salary cap does exist hmm. So I don't think you can sign all four or keep all four with salaries near $30 million. I'd rather have my quarterback box checked before my wide receiver box. I also happen to think T.J. Watt is the first ballot Hall of Famer who shows no signs of slowing down. So I've got to pay Watt more than $30 million next year, and i probably got to pay Justin Fields around that. I mean, I think right now he's pl playing like a $25 million a year quarterback. Thank God I don't have to make that decision today. But if he's playing like he is on October 3rd, by January 3rd, then I think the Steelers should give him a two- or three-year extension that pays him close to $30 million a season. Is how he played last week against Indianapolis enough to kind of give them confidence and say, okay, look, he can he can do stuff in the passing game more confidently. We, we feel good about that. Is that enough for them to say that's going to be a mode of attack against Dallas this weekend, or do you think it's still – Nope, we got to get this run game going against what has been a really bad Cowboys run defense. Yeah, I mean, it'll probably be a lot of that uh, at, at the start of the game, I would think. Uh, that's Arthur Smith's, uh, the offensive coordinator, going back to his Atlanta days. That's his personality. I think that's a big reason why he got hired here, because his personalities are in line with Tomlin. Uh, ever since Roethlisberger left, Tomlin, I think, wants to – now uh, take back the reins of control from the quarterback. You know, Ben Roethlisberger had almost like an Aaron Rodgers-like effect on the Steelers where he generally got what he wanted and no one was going to say no to him. So I think now Tomlin wants to be the man in charge again. And that has led to an offense that is really charged with not screwing the game up instead of winning it. Now, the issue is they've had – uh, huge injuries on their offensive line. They are going to get their best guard back this week, Sayamalu, who they brought over from the Eagles. Uh, and it looks like their running back depth is going to be nada because Patterson, who's run better than Najee Harris, 
and Jalen Warren, who's been better than Najee Harris for two years. I don't think either one of those two guys are going to play. So it will be a showcase game for Najee. I think he stinks in this offense. <laughs> I think he's one of the worst first round picks they've ever made, honestly. <laughs> and so I get ready for uh, the old Woody Hayes three yards in a cloud of dust here to start the game against the Cowboys. And they will have to open it up. I mean, the Colts run defense got gashed by Joe Mixon and gashed by Josh Jacobs. And I believe at one point in the third quarter, Najee's stat line was nine carries for 11 yards. He just can't run behind this offensive line. Cordell Patterson had six carries for 43 yards before he got injured. It's not the line's fault. It's not the play caller's fault. It's the running back's fault. I wish we traded him to you guys before the season started. <laughs> I was hoping Jerry got kind of an itchy trigger finger and traded for Najee Harris. There was some scuttlebutt about that up here. I was hoping that happened. Uh, uh, yes, so to answer the question, they'll start running the ball, but I don't think they'll be able to stick with it because I don't anticipate it being that effective. Andrew, um, I saw you tweet that Patterson should get more carries than Harris, yes. but did you say, did I hear you correct in that you don't think Cordero is going to play this week? No, I don't. I tweeted that before he practiced on Wednesday. Uh, he had an ankle injury that, that uh, caused him to leave the uh, game against Indy. I think if he plays the entire game, the Steelers come back and win. Uh, I think, and you know, I, I say that hoping that Tomlin and Arthur Smith would have recognized in that game that Patterson was the better option and they would have stuck with him as the game went on. Uh, but his vision, his ability to, I think, understand where the openings are in the offensive zone scheme that they're running here. Uh, I just think, I can't believe I'm saying this, that a kick returner is a better option as a running back <laughs> than a guy they used a first round pick on. Andrew Filippone joining us here on 105 through the fan. I, I love the under in this game. It's at 44. I think it's a little bit too high. Uh, what's your take on that? Why it's so high? And then who do you like in this game? I think it's so high because of what the Steelers defense allowed the Colts offense to do. And it was the first time all year they came in averaging uh, opponents, averaging uh, fewer than uh, nine points a game against them. Uh, they shut down Kirk Cousins. They shut down the Chargers. The Chargers had negative yards in the second half of that game, of that week three match up here. Now, Herbert got injured in the second half, but it wasn't like it was a fluke play. He got knocked out of the game by the Steelers, so I actually give them credit for that. Uh, but we saw their weaknesses here in this defense. The biggest one right now is they have had an inside linebacker problem ever since the tragic Ryan Shazier situation. And they've thrown money and picks at it constantly. I mentioned I hated the Najee Harris pick. I hated the Devin Bush pick even more. Uh, <laughs> the guy's smaller probably than your producer, no offense. And he <laughs> sucked. I mean, he could not tackle guy. I don't know how he made plays it in the Big Ten at Michigan. They traded up to the 10th pick. Guy's awful. And so that didn't work. Miles Jack brought him in. That didn't work. Now we've got Patrick Queen. Ravens fans are laughing at us because they thought Patrick Queen was a byproduct of playing next to Roquan Smith. The same way Steelers fans knew that Bud Dupree was only good at Ed Rusher because he got to play opposite T.J. Watt. We let him walk in free agency. Well, Queen has been an abject failure. He's been terrible. Missed tackles, miscommunication things with the green dot uh, Sunday in Indianapolis. And then our top corner, Joey Porter Jr., a lineage guy, Joey Porter's kid, had an excellent rookie year, but gave up a bad touchdown against L.A. and was really exposed by Michael Pittman Jr. badly last week with both Richardson and uh, Flacco in the game. So they're probably thinking C.D. Lamb can take advantage of him. That's how you get a higher total. Um, teams last week showed that you can throw the ball on the Steelers. And I'm guessing Mike McCarthy, we love big Mike here in Pittsburgh, by the way. Greenfield Mike, Big Mike, <laughs> used to work at the toll booth here on the Pennsylvania Turnpike with a gigantic dip in uh, and probably uh, probably a takeout order from Archie's Wings on the south side. Uh, I bet he is licking his chops, looking at uh, Joey Porter Jr. and some of the mistakes that got made in the secondary last week. Would you trade 30 seconds, Andrew? Would you trade Tomlin for McCarthy? Uh, I would. I know that is a controversial take. I'm not just saying that because he's a Pittsburgh guy. I want offense. I'm sick of watching a team that wants to win games 17 to 14. Now, I know people will come back and say, well, that's the way the NFL has evolved back to in 2024. I still think when it's all said and done, you need teams that can score. And I trust a big Mike offense over a Mike Tomlin one. 
Andrew, fantastic preview. I can't imagine why you might be a little bit of a lightning rod, especially uh, if you insult people the way you did our producer, but we love that. (laughs) Thank you so much, man. Enjoy the game. You guys are awesome. Keep up the good work down there. You're killing it.